this example, we're going to be looking at how we can create a page element and then add it onto the document, looking at methods append, prepend, before and after we can create the element. And the differences between append, child, and append methods in JavaScript. An unordered list that's going to be outputting a number of page elements that are all created using JavaScript code and adding them into an unordered list on the page. That's coming up in this lesson. On the left hand side, I've got the web editor opened and using Visual Studio Code. And of course, you can use any editor that you're comfortable with. Created a basic HTML file that's got one page element. So that's a div with an ID of output. And then there's some content that's sitting within it and connecting to a JavaScript file called app.js on the same directory. And I've got that file opened here. Currently, it's just a blank file. And you can, of course, type in some content in there. So just to make sure that we do have a connection to the JavaScript file, this is going to output some content into the console. On the right hand side, I've got the web browser open. I'm using Chrome, so opened up to the page, the HTML index page. And I'm also using an add on in Visual Studio Code called Live Server. So that gives you the ability to run this. You can add that in as an add on and then open it up as a live server and that allows you to open up HTML pages and use the local machine. So that gives you the web address of 127.0.0.1 and then a port address. At the bottom of the browser, I've got the dev console open. So this is Chrome. Most modern web browsers will have a developer console. So this gives us a way to interact and see the JavaScript as we're adding it and updating it into the page. So let's get started with the coding. So first off, we want to select the main page element that we want to use. You don't have to have a page element. You can select the document body as well. So I'll show you some examples of that. I'm going to be selecting the output using the document and using query selector. We're selecting the element by its ID. So we use the hash and then whatever we've got for the ID value. And in this case, it's going to be output. So now when I've set up that variable, if I type in output, I'm selecting the page element that I've got on the page. You can also select the page body. So just uh, create an object for that and using the document object as well and select the body and save that. And now when we type in the page body, that's going to return back the entire body contents of the page. So that gives us a way that if we don't have a particular element where we're creating some elements and we want to add a page element in, we can add it into the body as well as adding it into the element that we're selecting. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a page element. So this is going to be our first element. So I'll just call it L1 and using the document object. And this is where we've got a method that's called create element. And that allows us to create an element using JavaScript code. And within the argument of the create element method, we need to provide what type of element that we're creating. So in this case, we'll create an H1 and that will be the H1 that will be created. I'm going to console log out the element one so that we can see it within the console. So we see that we've got the L1 is created and we've got a value of H1, but there's no contents in there. So we can add in contents in there just as we would with any other page element. So in this case, I'm going to be using the text content and we'll type in hello world and just type in hello world one. So that gives us a page element with an H1, hello world one. Notice it hasn't been showing up on the page yet. And that's because we haven't added it into the document yet. So we can have various methods within JavaScript in order to add it into the page. So first off, we need to select the parent of the element that we're going to add it into. So let's go ahead and we're going to add it into output. And then using the append method, this allows us to add that current element into the element with the ID of output. So there's our page element added onto the page. Let's go into our HTML code. And if in the output, there's our H1 that we just created using the JavaScript code. And now we see it sitting within the page. So we can also add it if we wanted to append it to the page body. So we can do that as well. And this is gonna add it into the next available space within the body object. So when we open up the source, we see that we've got our HTML code and we've also got the JavaScript 
statement there that we were calling out to the JavaScript app.js file. And then after all of the content in the body is done, then that's where we're getting that h1 being appended to. You can also append it to a second element if you want. And what interesting thing that happens here is because this is referencing the one object and first it gets appended to the body. And then secondly, we've got another statement that's appending it into output. So the end result is that it moves from the body and goes into the output area. There's also append values where we can append as append child. And there's also a before and after. So we'll take a look at those. And this is just going to be a response back. So we'll be looking to see what we get for a response back when we do output append. And we'll console log out the result that we get back. And when we go into the console, we see that we get undefined. And that's because the append method doesn't have a response back. But if you do append child, what happens is that the response back is going to be that initial method that we use. So that initial object that we had for the L1 gets returned back, and then now that gets assigned to REST1. So now we're in a situation where we've got two objects that are pointing to the same memory location, so L1 and REST1. So you're probably wondering, well, what happens when we output these into the console? So we're returning back that same object. And now what happens if we make an update to it? So let's make an update to REST1. We'll update the text content so it's nice and visible. And we'll just write hello1 instead of hello world1. And the result is that because this is referencing the memory location and that's being returned back, so we can use either one of these variables in order to reference that same object. And that's the same thing that we can select the object and we can update it. So even if we want to reference it as L1, we can do that as well. And what do you think that resulting output within the text content will be? And if you said hello to, you are correct because all it's doing is it's overriding that object and objects within JavaScript, they're not the same as variables. They don't actually overwrite the content. They have are stored within a particular memory location and that's that we're getting referenced. We're referencing that memory location. So we can also add content. So if we want to take output and we can do a before. So add in that same element and we can add it in before. And what happened now, just as we saw, it's going to be uh, still selecting that same element and just moving it within a different place in the page. So what it's doing here when we're doing output before, it's actually putting it before the output. There's also an, out, there's an after method as well. So if we wanted to move this after, we can now see that within the after is placing it after the output element. So we have a choice of where we can add it and we can do it after or before. And there's also a prepend. And what prepend will do is this is the opposite of append. So it's going to actually add it within the element itself. And when we take a look at it, we see that now it's added within the output element and there's our hello too that's sitting there. And once again, we were able to make updates to it because we were referencing that same object information when we were doing the append. So there's a number of ways that we can add the page elements. So let's go ahead and we're going to add a bunch of page elements to the page. We'll create a for loop and we'll let the value of i well, i is less than 10, and that should be an i, not a 1. So while i is less than 10, we'll increment i by 1. And then this is where we can create the page element. So add some text content to it. So we'll just copy some of the code that we were using earlier. And we want to reference it into a variable. So it's going to make it a lot easier to work with. I'm going to update the use the backticks, so the template literals. So this will give me a way to have a more dynamic value using the curly brackets. And then we can reference the value of i plus 1. So that will give us a count starting at 1, going all the way to 10. And then where we want to add it into the page, add it, do an append afterwards. So we'll take L1, we'll select it into output, and then we'll do L1, append of L1. 
So that gives us all of those page elements and we're creating them as H1s. So let's actually give it a different variable name and we'll create it as a div. We need to update it there at the end. And we can see that it's updating the eight output values of the divs. So we've got one, two, three, all the way to 10. When we open up the page, we've got this type of structure. So let's go ahead and we're gonna create another one where we'll create a list. So on that, before we do the for loop, we'll create an unordered list using the document and create element. And this one's gonna be creating an unordered list. And then we can append it into the unordered list. So we'll add in a bunch of list items. So this will be a list item. I'll just call it li1. Make sure I update these values here, li1. And then this is, instead of a div, they're gonna be list items. and this is appending the list item into the li1 and appending it to the unordered list. Now when we go into the unordered list, we actually don't see where it's been appended and that's because we haven't added the unordered list into the output. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll just add the unordered list and append it into the output so that that way it's gonna be visible on the page and it gets added into the output element. And there's our unordered list and all of the list items with the values that we've set dynamically as we're looping through the loop. So these are some examples of what you can do with page elements as you're adding them to the page using JavaScript.